hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so in today's video i wanted to share with you guys the latest news about bushiri bushiri for those that do not know is a malawian pastor malawian pastor that um, uh, moved to south africa and he became very financially successful okay south africa as far as i know is where he has his biggest church a lot of you would know him i have a few videos about him i will link them so you can maybe get a feel of who it is so i don't want to go into all of that so basically recently this man was uh, picked up by the police uh, picked up by the government and locked away him and his wife for fraud and uh, for money laundering okay and they were locked up for a while they had bail hearings and then during i think they had about two three bail hearings they didn't grant him bail because they were worried that he was going to run away to run away from south africa and run to his country and then at a point they actually said that he had moved his most expensive cars to his country which is malawi and so they were thinking that he was a flight risk and this same man this same man they already said that they found out that he was using um diplomatic passport him and his wife they've been using diplomatic passports to travel okay and so they were worried that their flight risk that they may run if they give grant them bail so the last time they had the last hearing i made a video about that as well i he, he got a bail i think the bail was hundred thousand each or two hundred thousand each i can't remember something like that and then they granted him bail his lawyer promised he was not going to he was not going to abscond, he was not going to run away, that he was going to come for the court dates and everything. And they granted him and his wife bail. They just found out that him and his wife have left the country. And him and his wife are supposed to be coming to the police every, on every Mondays and Fridays to sign. Because that is the proof that they are still in the country. But anyways, he ran away. Okay, he ran away to his country. It's interesting because now they are saying they don't know how he left. They don't know which way he went. And I was trying to look at the map. You know, I'm not great with maps. But if you look at the map, to go from South Africa, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, to go from South Africa to Malawi, you don't even need to cross any water. As in, there's no sea or any big river or any, you know, there's no water you need to cross. It's showing me that from South Africa, the next country, um mozambique and then malawi so it's very easy to go and then this man is rich don't forget that he's rich he doesn't even need to go to the airport this map is saying and look at this one if i can see very well this one is showing see where is south africa south africa is at the bottom there so if you leave south africa mozambique and then you're in malawi or if you want to go through this other side, you can go through South Africa, Zimbabwe, and then boom, you are in Malawi. It's very easy to go. And now they're wondering, how did he go? Where did he go? He doesn't need to go to an airport. And if he even needs, even if he wants to go on to an airport, if he could, that's what I don't understand. You see, why they are, I don't know why they are, they are confused. If this man, because they've already said that in the past, him and his wife traveled with uh, diplomatic passports even though they were not diplomats if they could ac acquire diplomatic passports illegally because it's illegal they are not diplomats if they could acquire that nothing stops them from getting a passport and leaving south africa but i'm still believing they must have gone by road now another thing that they already you see <laughs> I just, when I heard about it, I wasn't surprised. Honestly, I wasn't surprised at all. One, the bail is nothing. This man is stinkingly rich. That bail amount, because he said, if you don't come to court, you will lose that amount to that money, that your bail money goes to the state. That money is nothing to him. From what we have seen, have you seen his cars and his house? This guy has a private jet. What is 100,000 to him? It's nothing. Then, they already said that he has moved all his most expensive cars to Malawi. What other signs do you need to know that this man is not planning to hang around? There's no, like, seriously. If he was in Europe, then you'd be like, okay, it's going to be hard for him to tr run away. Do you know, African countries are very easy to cross borders. Very easy to cross borders. As far as I know, South Africa and Malawi, um, the government should be able to transfer a prisoner or 
a suspect or whatever you want to call it from one country to the other to go face charges i think they are under the what is this treaty the treaty where you can transfer a prisoner or transfer somebody you know from one country to the other to the other so i don't know if malawi is going to transfer him but legally they should legally as far as i know they are supposed to transfer him back to south africa to face the charges but on the other hand i'm wondering like now he has left south africa where he has his biggest mega following right church and he has gone to malawi what is he planning to do is it that he's planning not to ever return back to south africa where he has his ministry is that what it is so is he going to start afresh from malawi this is the country he left you know he left with the ministry god called them in quote because this is what they say god called them to go to south africa leave their country abby leave their country and go to south africa to go and tell to go and you know tell people about the gospel in south africa and leave their own country right okay that's fine because i'm not there when god was telling them now so who is now telling him now to run back to his country is he going to now start re-establishing himself in his own home country is he going to start running his big mega church in his own country is it or, or is he going to stay in hiding because the question is how long can you stay in hiding is he going to come out from hiding to go and establish a big church in his country but if he's not going back to south africa what about his family in the lord his children and the lord that he had built in south africa what is going to, like, I, I, this is what I'm talking about. So now he has left her without a daddy. Uh, sorry, a daddy in the Lord in South Africa. Now they have to find a new daddy in the Lord in South Africa or what's going to happen. Or maybe another church member is going to take over the church. I mean, another pastor is going to take over the church in South Africa. You know, I, I don't, like, I just, some, these are just some of the questions that are coming up in my head. Although I've said this several times before, that people should not be attaching their, their faith in God to any pastor or whatever, because it's, it's God that you are serving. When, because unfortunately, some people have, some people can get very attached to a particular pastor. It's like that pastor has Jesus in his pocket, you know. This is an eye-opener that the pastor can go any day, any time, you know, in any way. But when your relationship with God is built on God himself, nothing would change in your life i have seen churches where the mega go leaves and the churches collapse because church members are already addicted if i can use that word to their daddy in the lord well this is an example of why it shouldn't be like that you know so the question is if he's going to stay in hiding in his home country is he going to still continue to be a pastor or this is the end of him being a pastor just some of the questions that are coming to my mind now i'm going to end this video because i didn't plan this video to be too long i'm going to end this video by you know saying this because there are some people that are saying oh this is this is not this is normal this is this is normal you know this is like the persecution that the persons in the bible went through this is what is going on they are they are fighting him for his faith and stuff like that i'm just going to say this let, let just be conscious of the fact that the apostles were they experienced trials and, and trials and tribulations and the persecutions for doing the work of god okay there are pastors in parts of the world where the bible is not allowed to enter and those pastors have lost their lives for even bringing the bible to a part of the world where the bible is forbidden those are people that are dying for christ that are being they are going through trials and tribulations for God, for the things of God. There are pastors that, you know, believe strongly that same-sex marriages are sin and everything. And they've come up and spoke about it. And some of them have gone into jail for that. Okay? They are doing it for what they hold on to as their faith. Right? There are pastors that have got into trouble with the government because they have come up to speak up against the evil in their society, whatever it is. At least those ones are suffering for the faith that they are holding on to. I'm just giving these examples, right? You know, whatever it is, but it is because of their faith on how, or how they believe our Christianity should be practiced that they are suffering for, that they are, that they are get going into trial for, that they are suffering this um, that they are suffering these trials and tribulations for, the persecution for. But let's not forget that this Bushiri's case is not about his faith. Though. This whole case is not about his belief in God. This whole case is about money laundering and fraud. Take note of that. It's about money laundering and fraud. 
So this is not him being attacked for his faith. This is about something that he shouldn't have been involved in at all. Check out the videos I explained of these things already. This had, he got involved in things that he shouldn't have got involved at all. All you need to do is see some of those victims that their monies were taken. Some of these victims that are coming out and talking about how their monies were taken off them. With the promise that it's like an investment scheme kind of a thing that ended up being accused of being a fraud. So don't be saying he's being persecuted for his faith. Or, no. This is about money laundering and fraud. Okay, so don't compare this with the apostles that gave their lives for the gospel. Don't compare it with, with those ones. Am I saying he's guilty? No. But what I'm, I'm trying to make sure I emphasize the difference between what he's going through and what the apostles in the Bible went through. This is not him suffering for his faith. So, my belief is that the right thing for him to do is go to court, face your charges, your lawyer is there to represent you. If you are innocent, you did not steal anybody's money, you did not dupe anybody. My prayer is that he'll be found innocent if he's innocent. But if he took people's money, they should squeeze the money out of him and pay every single person that he took their money. He has a lot of houses and whatever his mansion, his private jet and his expensive cars. If he truly, truly took people's money, if he truly did what they said he did, they should sell everything he owns and pay those people. Don't make sure, just make sure you understand me. I said, if he is guilty. My prayer for him, I've said it before, i say it again, is that if he's innocent, may he be proven innocent. But if he's not, my prayer for the victims is that they get their money back. That's how I feel about it. And as always, whatever your opinion is, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Um, and with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.